In 3.5, we're going to talk about age structure diagrams, also called population pyramids. However, College Board calls them age structure diagrams, so I'm going to try to stick to that term. So this is an age structure diagram, very basic. Um, it can tell us quite a bit of information. So to construct it, we need to know the individual um, or the, the total population of the entire country. We need to know the different age the population of each age cohort. So the population of children 0 to 4, 5 to 9, 10 to 14, and so on. We also need to know the total population of males and the total population of females. So to get each and every one of these bars, um, it's not shown in this diagram because it's really hard to find a general age structure diagram. Um, so if you can find one, let me know. So the each of these bars tells us the percent of individuals in this age category in the entire country. So let's say it was 1%. Or here, let's say maybe like this is 1% from 60 to 64 males. This one bar would tell us that's the six, like it's 1% of the entire country or state or region, whatever we're looking at. So that's how we construct it. And then to interpret the diagram, we look at the general shape. So if it's it's got a really wide base, that means we're seeing a lot of babies being born. Um, if we see that it drastically decreases, we can also tell us um, things about the country like infant mortality. Uh, it can also tell us like, you know, if the life expectancy is really low, so maybe if only a very small percentage of the population gets to be above 65 or even makes it that far, that tells us population or the life expectancy is very young. Um, but if we see this really wide base, uh, that's going to tell us that there's a lot of children being born and we're going to see, you know, this momentum happen where all these, th these children are then going to have children themselves. Um, and so we see, especially as, you know, this becomes more even, we have a very high, high population growth rate. Um, this tells us that life is more unstable, where this tells us that life is more stable um, because more people are living into middle age um, and beyond. Um, so this is something we'd see of a more developing country. And then this is what, like, as we progress through these, different types of age structure diagrams this tells us that this country is becoming more and more developed. So as we see this this triangle kind of become a little more rectangular um, that tells us that the birth rate is beginning to decrease because the you know amount of children or amount of people between 15 and 65 is relatively about the same as the amount of children 15 and below. Um, oh I forgot to mention that these cut off here um, the 15 below, we call that the pre-reproductive stage, the, between this, the reproductive, and then beyond that is post-reproductive. And that tells us, you know, like, who are the ones being born, who are the ones actually having children, and how many people are done having children. And this can tell us a lot about, you know, what kind of life is in this country, you know, like, what was life like in countries. Um, it can tell us, um, you know, what kind of market this country would have, like what kind of products would do really well. Let's say if, you know, if you're developing this product, like who is your, who are you trying to sell it to? Um, so it's very, very handy, these little age structure diagrams. Um, anyways, in this last stage, contracting, which also we call zero growth. So this would be um, high growth rate. This is moderate and then this is zero, and this is negative. Yeah, it'll be up on another slide if I'm wrong, um, so you'll see the right answer. But anyways, once we see this little dip happen, where we get more of an inverted triangle kind of eventually happening, this tells us that the birth rate is falling. And so because this birth rate is falling, this cohort, when it moves up into this cohort, they are also gonna have less children. And that means we're going to see a population decrease. Um, we have more of an elderly population, so that means more people that might not necessarily be able to work would have to be taken care of. Um, so that's going to affect the economy. We have 
there, this means that fewer people will be moving up into the the working age as well. And so that's going to have a, an effect on the economy. Uh, longer life expectancy. Um, so this, this tells us that the country is more developed, but now has entirely new economic problems that it has to figure out how to deal with. So just as an example, this is uh, our population pyramid, or like I said, age structure diagram, in 2018. A few things that we can tell from this. Let's say we look at this this bar right here. This says that 3% of our entire population, which in 2018 was um, almost 329 million, this 3% are men between the ages of 40 and 44. Um, that's how you would read that. We can also tell a few things uh, such as women live longer. So, you know, this for quite a few cohorts, the numbers are relatively the same. Um, sometimes boys might have, um, there might be some more boys than girls. But then once we get into old age, we see the, the bars for women, like 2.5 to 2.7, 1.9 to 2.2. Uh, 0 0.2 to 0 0.4, the bars for women are much longer than the bars for men. So that tells us that the women live longer. So they make up a higher percentage of the population of elderly people. We can also see bubbles of population occur. So for example, after World War II, when people were having lots and lots of babies, um, we have this big bubble here, and that's the or the baby boomers. And so it's been really interesting to see as these baby boomers have moved up through um, through the through the age groups, that's then affected what kind of economy um, what kind of economy we have, in the sense that you know you have a certain population like you have a lot of workers and they need jobs, or you have a lot of people buying certain things, and so that you know that it drives the market a lot. Um, and then as the baby boomers had children, we have we see another slightly smaller bubble. Um, and that's where the millennials are, so, like me. <laughs> Moving on. All right, obviously, like we were saying, a population with a higher amount of young people will have um, a more rapidly growing population, but when we look at stable and declining populations, we see that that population of young people decrease. So if you have a lot of young people, so like under 18 years old, uh, we're going to see what's called the population momentum effect. And that can be demonstrated mathematically. This might be something you have to pause and kind of look at. It's because it's kind of it's kind of set up weird, but I'll try my best to explain it. All right. So let's say this starting at time zero. Time zero, we have 400 children, 200 people that are fertile and can have children. So that means we're going to have a lot of people that are then going to become like of age or childbearing years. So if we have a lot of children, we're going to see that they're all going to have a lot of children, and then they're also going to have a lot of children. And so even if the fertility rate decreases, um, there's still just so many people there that even if each person's not having that many children, there's still a lot of people having children. And so we're going to see that a huge increase of population and we're going to see that happen before the fertility rate begins to slow the population back down. Uh, so if the population momentum is it's kind of seems like it as children get older they have more babies so if there's more people more babies and probably have more babies and so that's where the momentum part comes in. All right these are some just random things you have to know for the AP exam. Our current population is 7.7 .7 billion, projected to hit 10 billion by 2057. The top countries in terms of population size in the, the world are China and the United States. China is 1.4 billion, or 0.43. India is 1.37, and currently the United States is at 330 million. All right, now it's your turn to explain age structure diagrams and what kind of things you can um, get from them.